Hello and welcome to this last card wipe tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at these little bits at the bottom and then we're going to open up a project so that I can show you how I created the card wipe bit that you see at the beginning of this tutorial. The key thing to position and rotation jitter to remember that jitter is animated. So we're going to be playing with position jitter and you'll see that we've got two things. We've got X amount and X speed and speed is at 1 which means that it is already animating if we want to avoid it from animating we can turn speed down to 0 but I'll show you what I mean in a second I'm going to take jitter amount and start to move it up and as I start to move it up you can see that the cards are moving in the X position if I go to Y jitter you'll see that they'll start to move in Y and if I go Z jitter you can see that I'm going to start moving them in space so I'm, this is jitter amount so those are now moving in 3D space. And if I go back to my camera position and I rotate, say, my Y rotation, you can start to see that those really are in 3D space. And I can zoom out with my Z position if I like to get a, a better feel for what's going on here. So you'll see that these things have all been moved in 3D space. And if I were to do a quick RAM preview, you can see that the jitter is actually causing them to move around. Now you may or may not want them to move, that's completely up to you, but bear in mind that jitter speed is what makes them move around. So if the jitter speed is at 1, they're going to move. If the jitter speed is at 0, they won't move. So if you wanted to use it as a reveal, what you might animate is either the jitter speed starting at 1 and going down to 0, or from 0 to start off with. So if I take jitter speeds all to 0, 0, 0, and 0, so they're all at zero. If I do a RAM preview, nothing's going to happen because they're all static. But what I can do is I can then animate the jitter amount. So if I start them all at the beginning of my timeline, jitter amounts, and then I go forward to, say, two seconds or, say, four seconds, and I reset them. So right-click, reset, takes it back to zero. It's the quick way of doing it. Right-click, reset, right-click, reset. Suddenly, it's all in one. So that what we've actually got here is a reveal and you can be animating the camera at the same time as you want so we've got a reveal and I haven't done any sort of transition at all for the whole thing I've just done a reveal and if I want to then animate the camera what I can do is I can again go to the beginning and I can animate my Z position and my Y rotation which are the two we played with again go forward now I don't know where those keyframes are so I can just select the layer and hit U and there are my keyframes so I can go forward to that keyframe so it'll finish at the same place and again reset right click position Z position right click Y rotation so we now have a complete reveal so I can then do a RAM preview and you can see that all of those bits are pulling together to give me a complete reveal even though I hadn't actually started off with any kind of transition whatsoever Okay, so it's a very easy way of revealing things, even without using a transition. Clearly, rotation is exactly the same thing. We've got rotation jitter, so if we take the amounts up for X, Y, and Z rotation, and again, you'll see that these will be jittering, because jitter is already on, so they will all be jittering while we're doing an animation. So I do a RAM preview of those as well as having the reveal on all the other things everything else is going to be jittering in X, Y and Z not by a great amount but just enough to make it somewhat anarchic and if I wanted to have stopped them I would have to have animated the jitter to have completed at that point but also do notice that they do intersect so it's not perfect this but if we want it to finish what we can do is again we can go to the beginning we can click the stopwatch for amount and in fact we can do a stopwatch for all of these things and then when we get to the next keyframe just use the keyframe navigator to get to those next keyframes and just right click all of those reset I'm going to re reset reset
and then we've got the same sort of thing so do another RAM preview And that simply gives us a, a, an interesting and quite fun reveal. Okay, so let me open up another project now that I've done just to show you how we can use it in other ways. So I'm going to go to File, I'm going to open a project. And this is going to be the project that you have at the beginning of these tutorials. So here's the text layer, I'll just solo that, just a simple text layer with some layer styles applied. Note, by the way, that I have applied layer styles and it's not broken 3D. The whole thing still works. So um, you can apply layer styles if you're using the card wipe effect. I mention this because if you're doing 3D with a normal layer and you apply layer styles, it breaks 3D. And then the background, the dark layer is just the, the background behind it. So what's causing the these bits and pieces that we can see here? Okay, so we've got two things that are happening. Obviously, the back layer as we're doing a reveal must be the text and the green but the front layer we've got this incredible effect well actually that's all done on this particular one here so if I open that up you can see that I've got a solid layer and I've actually used a preset which I've changed very slightly but it's a preset an animated preset which you can get from if you go to your effects and presets and you click on the panel menu and you go to browse presets that opens up Adobe Bridge And once that's opened, if you go to backgrounds, you'll see that it is this one, I think. Smoke rising effects, and I just simply changed, I think, the color of it. So if you wanted to apply that, by the way, you, what you would do is you would have a layer, if I have no layer selected here, for instance, and I actually go back to bridge and I double click to apply it again, you'll see that it's coming on its own solid layer. So I had nothing selected and the difference between the two is, I think, you can see I've made some very slight differences with the colour and possibly I've played a little bit with uh, some other bits and pieces. So you can see I've just used that as a background layer. So if I select the layer that I've already brought in, I do UU, you can actually see the bits and pieces that were original and the bits I've changed. So I'm going to select the one above and hit UU as well. And you can see that they've come in at different places. So my current time indicator was here when I brought the second one in, so they've come in, but pretty much, they're pretty much standard except it looks like I've just changed the mid-tones. So you can see there's not a lot of difference. I've also added in a couple of extra animation points to make it go out fully to um, the whole 10 seconds of the composition that I've done. So it's pretty much a standard layer with a couple of minor changes. The minor changes being that I've added a few extra keyframes to keep the wave warp moving through and I've changed the, the mid-tones. So very simple thing to do. Just going to pull that back down again and hit U just to scroll that layer back up. So if I go to my comp where it's all in here together and I select, obviously this is the background layer here, if I just turn on the background layer you'll see it, that's the text which is hidden because we're using card wipe and I select the layer and I do UU. We can see what I've done to the card wipe effect, what changes I have made. Now, it looks on this particular one, I've got card wipe effect and I've got a glow. So I've animated the glow intensity, which is what's probably creating these burnouts. I've also clearly got one column and lots of rows. So you can see you've got the rows, um, but we're not breaking them up. So they come in as strips. And I've played with the scale so that they actually separate out. If you remember when you pull the scale down, they'll separate out, which I've animated. And I've played around with the camera position and I've also animated the ambient lighting. So I've overblown it to start off with and then clearly it's gone down as we've gone over time. So you, you can see the jitter amount is what I've literally just shown you moving things around. So it's jittered for me. I've blown it out to start off with. That's pulled through until the whole thing comes back and does the card wipe all the way through. So that's how I created it using card wipe. With a little bit of creativity and imagination, you can create some amazing bits and pieces. I do have to have, I think, one more that I can show you. Yeah, this is, again, a text background. So we can have something that's going to start off just coming on as a reveal. 
and again we've got lots in this particular one I think uh, there's the text so it's got a bit of fractal noise with a little bit of a tint applied to it and there's the text that's the background so I go back to the comp there's the background comp there bear in mind you must pre-compose it to work and then I've literally used a JPEG for this particular item and again if I do a UU you can see they've got card wipe and I've got columns and rows so I've got 55 and 100 so quite a lot you can see that those are all moving around I've again done position X Y and Z but I haven't done huge amounts just to give this sort of not together look that then eventually comes together as we get past it so you can use it in lots of different ways to create some really quite grungy and uh, unusual feelings you don't even have to use the um, the transition completion you can see this one I'm on my background layer all the time I haven't actually even played with transition if I just pull transition through you can see what the original JPEG was and it's a picture of, of fish but I didn't even use that I didn't even animate it I just had the background layer for some reason but you can create some amazing looks some really almost jigsaw puzzly type looks or matrixy type looks just by playing with this one powerful effect my name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found these tutorials useful and thank you for watching Thank you.